I um, didn't have a realization of wanting to be an actor. I had uh, a realization of not wanting to do one thing solely for the rest of my life. The only uh, job that I could sort of think about that was different every day and challenged you in different ways was acting. You didn't have to be a lawyer or an astronaut, you could be both. And I haven't actually gotten to be either yet. It's still bucket list for that, still time for that, yeah. The first uh, thing professionally was The Libertine, my first job. On a technical note, you know, I'd never seen a film camera before. I didn't know what a call sheet was, I didn't know what marks were, a reverse, a close-up, I'd never heard of any of this stuff. So that and your opposite Johnny Depp and John Malkovich and Samantha Morton and, you know, the roster of great British sort of actors turned up. Oh my God, I was beyond nervous. I had to make out with Johnny, mutually masturbate with Johnny, um, get run through by a pike, die in front of him, and all these like huge things. And it was such a deep end, kind of baptism of, of fire. Homeland, how did they come to me, as it were? They, they didn't. I made a tape and sent it in. It was made on a point and click camera that the ratio was wrong, it was out of focus. I was wearing the wrong thing. I filmed it against a door that I later learned they told me looked like I was in a mental asylum. It looked like a padded door. It wasn't, but it, apparently they were like, where the hell is this kid? Cut to, I did seven separate audition tapes for this one scene. I never got a script. I never got a, anything. Just what, just a bit simple, hello, my name's Peter Quinn, your name's Carrie, end of the, that's it. Some producers were in Israel and some were in New York and some were in LA. One would phone up and say, ignore what the last one said, do it this way. And then the other one would phone up and say, ignore what he said, do it this way. After the sixth one, I was just like, I'm fine. I'm, I'll do something else. This is, this is crazy making. And my agent begged me to do one more, the proverbial, just one more. That was the one. Two weeks later, I was on, on set. I don't know what's going to happen to Peter Quinn until I get the script. And in a funny sort of way, you and I don't know what's going to happen to us either. In that way, it's very, puts you right on your toes. And it does feel much more like a dance of some kind rather than a prepared rhetoric of, uh, you know what I mean? My favorite birthday, I remember the great storm of 1987 and waking up on the farm that my grandparents um, lived on. All of the huge trees in the wood behind the house that I used to climb and build swings on and leaf slides and all the rest of it, all of them had blown down and they were, you know, huge oaks. I remember asking when they would be up again, presuming it was going to be in a week or two. Someone said that they won't in your lifetime ever be up again. And the notion of time was suddenly incredibly real. These moments so kind of like hammer blows because I was mostly interested in, in play, being sociable and kind of knocking things over and, you know, breaking stuff and usual kind of little boy stuff. And then people would say these very epic things and they would always just completely knock me for six. I still can't quite believe that time works like that. My first kind of girl cinematic crush was probably Ursula Andress in Dr. No. Coming out of the sea with your little knife and you're kind of, you've got, again, this idea of agency. You're sort of a badass. You're not some kind of damsel in distress. She was tough and she was beautiful and, you know, all the rest of it. I'm still trying to work out what it's all about. <laughs>